In my time here, I have lived what feels like many lives. I lost my mother at an early age, and life set into motion the many changes that I would experience through my adolescence. My three siblings and I would move in with our aunt and her four kids. We totaled 10 with an array of characters considered family friends, always coming and going, no shortages of drama. We occasionally attended the Mormon church with my grandma, but mainly so our family could receive help to make ends meet when we needed. My family did not embrace God. Life for my family was drug-laden and disconnected. With plenty of run-ins with cops and social workers, we were known for all the wrong things locally, which perpetuated our trials and lessons. Life would continue this way until the state intervened and took me and three of the younger siblings into state's custody. There I would remain, placed with two different families, both of who were Mormon, each trying to share their truths, but none of that resonated. I resisted, and I tried to find my own way. I believed in a higher power, but never truly knew or understood the purpose of it all. I left the foster care system early at age 16 to live on my own, thinking that I knew best and continued living in my sin. I followed the golden rule, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Of course, later in life, I'll find out that these words are from God, written in Matthew 7:12. I did the typical adult thing. I had a house, worked the same job for over a decade, had a little money stored away, and my family and friends surrounded me. Everything they say that makes you happy, I was not. Something significant was missing. In Ecclesiastes 3, 1 through 2, it says, To everything there is a season a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born, and a time to die. It was settled. I moved from Salt Lake to Spokane in 2018 to move in with my brother and his three kids. Getting a new start, 100% of my choosing was exciting. I changed everything about who I once was. I worked at fun jobs that still ended up being jobs, made new friends, and explored. But once again, I felt I was missing something. I found myself trying to fill this void with jobs, people, and things, but there was no purpose in the day in and the day out. I spent time contemplating ways to bring it to an end. Each segment of my life felt forged through fire, and I was ready to see it finished. As I look back on it, each trial I had faced up to that point was God working to bring me to my knees and to Him, breaking me enough to be able to see and to hear. In Isaiah 58, 11, and the Lord will guide you continually and satisfying your desire in scorched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters do not fail. Watching how quickly things started to change in my life was bizarre. Everything around me was and is pointing to God, to spend time in His Word and to know Him. 1 Corinthians 2.9 Focus all of your attention on God, His ways, His thoughts, His desires, because you know His design for you is better than your heart can even imagine. What He has prepared for you is greater than what your eyes see and what your ears heard. I started reading the Bible with my boyfriend, Brian, and we expanded our knowledge of the living word. Months later, while sitting in the garden and reading the Bible, you would ask me if I had asked for my salvation and welcomed Jesus into my heart. Strange enough, in that same week, his sister would pose that same question. I hadn't even fathomed. It helped me to see how God was moving in my life to help me to find my way to him. I prayed and he gave me the answer. In Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 through 30, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. In the last year, I have devoted myself to the word and relied upon him as my savior. Though I'm not spotless, and I never will be, I will surely try. 
Uh, for my baptism, I would like to finish with a prayer. Um, dear Father, please strengthen me today to deny myself, to take up my cross and to follow you. I desire only to go where you'd have me go, to do only as you'd have me to do, and to say only what you want me to say, regardless of what people may do or say against me. I declare to live a life set apart, and I know God sees me as I am, completely cleansed and forgiven because of who Jesus is and what he has done for me. Good morning, Faith Bible Church. My name is Nathan. I'm here with uh, Brittany Allen, uh, whom, whose testimony we've just heard, and uh, we're excited for Brittany to get baptized today. Uh, I want to say, first of all, what baptism is. Uh, baptism is a proclamation of faith in Christ Jesus. It's a public proclamation. These waters don't save Brittany. She's rather proclaiming her faith in Christ, who's already forgiven her. He's already uh, become part of her life and given her his spirit. So this is a proclamation of her faith in Jesus, that he died for her sins and rose again. It's also a picture. It's a picture of how she is identified with Christ. She is joined with Christ, uh, joined with Christ in his death and in his resurrection. She's cleansed from her sin. Uh, it's also a picture of her identification with Christ's body, with you all. So uh, you as, as her church family, uh, she wants you to, to know who she is today and to know that she wants to be encouraged by you. She wants to be prayed for by you, ministered to by you, and she wants to pray for you and minister to you as well. So this is Brittany, as you see her around, uh, talk to her, share your story with her, encourage her, be part of her, walk with Christ. And so uh, it's my privilege today to, to baptize you, Brittany, based on your profession. So I'm asking you again, are you proclaiming today in this baptism that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior and that he, you're trusting in him alone? Oh boy, am I. <laughs> All right. Based on your profession, uh, it's my privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Yeah. <laughs> 